welcome back for another video folks and you may ask yourself why are we looking at the ground looking at a dead flower well unfortunately gate of the sheep our chief's operations manager at the WTF passed away last week and this is where she's been laid to rest with the help of the digger anyway enough of that uh, we need to go back inside and take a look indoors to show you something which um, I've been working on. Well, it's the Russian uh, R11A. We're making progress with that, so I thought I'd give you a quick uh, look inside. I love that Russian music playing in the background, don't you? gives a sort of good feeling about this. Anyway, uh, so this is the R118, the transmitter that I showed in the last video and uh, made some progress with this. Um, managed to get it working. The, um, the uh, I had a few problems with the, uh, the, the modulation, the, mod the modulator on this. So to cut a long story short, I have um, pulled the whole thing apart and redone the modulator section. Uh, as mentioned in the last video, didn't have any circuit diagram, so really no clue as to how they've done this. But uh, uh, just to recap, it's a GU81 uh, driven by uh, GU50 suppressor grid modulated. And the original transformer uh, that was in that speech modulator uh, is here, which I've pulled out. Uh, where has it gone? Um, it was here. That's the problem with the untidy shack. I uh, can't find anything. Anyway, um, if we find it, we'll uh, show it to you. But it was essentially a one-to-one -one modulation transformer. Um, but it was faulty. So I've had to rebuild this. And the uh, speech amplifier, which was a tricky part to get right, uh, I'll show you down there. That's the circuit diagram that I've used. So we've got microphone input, EF86, this is just like an EF86 ECL82 uh, triode, uh, pentode amplifier. And then that we're using a um, audio output transformer uh, as a choke, an audio choke, or one side of it. That's the secondary there, which is uh, connected to a 20 ohm resistor. In actual fact, what I've done here, I've actually used a, uh, a, a mains transformer, uh, uh, 500 hertz. It's something from an old aircraft thing, whatever it was. Uh, that works just as well. It's just really to act as an audio choke on the anode of this ECL82. Uh, and then we've got our audio which comes out of here. Uh, okay, by the capacitor there and goes to the suppressor grid of the GU81. Okay, so, and then we've got our negative bias supply, minus 170, 50k pot, and then that, and an audio choke here uh, for the uh, GU81 suppressor grid. So that is our modulator for this rig. Uh, so what I've done underneath here, let me just move this. So you can see it's a little bit different from what it was originally. Those, um, just to start here, so that's the GU81 base. I've put some into it. This is just glass fibre tape just to, um, just to provide a little bit of insurance because the, the bottom plate cover here is, is quite close. So that's what that's for there. Let me get a screwdriver, it's easier to point. Uh, this resistor here, and there's another resistor which you can't see on the other side is the screen supply and I think these these basically limit the screen current to the GU81 because obviously it's it's suppressor grid modulated so you're going to get an increased screen current screen grid current um, these are the grid leak resistors grid bias resistors uh, on the grid of the GU81 antiparasitic choke then we've got down here 
is a string of Zener diodes for the uh, negative bias. So I've got minus 100, and, sorry, minus two, well actually when it comes in it's about minus 280 volts offload from the power supply. And then the string of Zeners, uh, which um, knocks that down to 220 for the negative bias for the GU81. Uh, that resistor, I had no idea what that was doing there, what they used that for. So the GU50, which is the driver valve, that's the base. I've added a few bits and pieces here, so, you know, biasing resistors, RF chokes. This is a voltage divider for the meter, so we can see what the anode volts are on the grid, on the anode of the GU50. And we can also look at the, um, there's also a resistor up there, you can't see it, uh, which is a, um, a resistor which, I don't know, 20 ohm or something like that in the cathode circuit of the GU50, which is for measuring the, um, cathode current or anode current it'll be about the same um, what else uh, that's the lovely GU81M uh, so that's more or less it for the transmitter uh, most of the stuff I showed you on the last video on this um, but we had a few problems my original plan with this was to try and use this as a portable transmitter using this power supply which I built up. So this power supply is um, basically, well the, it's, a, it's basically all solid state switch mode and this will do uh, 3.2 kV and it does work but the problem we've had with it is that there's um, a couple of smaller inverters to provide all the various other voltages and they produce a lot of noise so when I was trying to test this out with the audio, uh, it wasn't working terribly well. A lot, of the, a lot of the switching noise was coming through in the audio, so I, uh, I basically abandoned it. But I might use this for a portable linear, because this actually works. So this uses the same resonant frequency converter that we showed you a few videos back. Uh, my friend Paul Bennett, uh, Ian's brother, he designed the circuit I basically put it together and it's a uh, it's similar principle uh, slightly different uh, uh, transformer uh, high frequency transformer and chokes but it's the same principle same chip uh, the resonant frequency converter controller chip is inside this a tiny little US uh, USS 25600 uh, little chip um, but I'm not going to take I'm not going to open it as I said if you want more information on that and how it works it's in it's in the uh, a couple of videos back so um, what we did to get this to work I ended up using my old power supply which was from my 813 linear amplifier which I don't really use much um, and I'm gonna probably rebuild into something else so I've made a few modifications this is the again this was on a video quite a long time ago when I first made this, made this about 10 years ago actually now, so it's been done pretty well. But I basically had a few transformers there, choke for the uh, different voltages um, that I need for that uh, GU81 transmitter. Uh, so this works, this actually works, and the the transmitter actually works pretty well as, as well, so I uh, can't really complain. Um, what else I've got to do on this? So I've cut out some aluminium panels to cover it up and uh, I do have somewhere in this shack a Russian receiver which will go quite nicely with this to make sort of a, a complete setup. Uh, the Russian receiver, I can't remember the name of it, it's also East German and uh, that runs off 2, point, uh, 2 or 3 volts actually, it's got some sort of built in inverters, it is, it is valve but uh, I'll show you that when I get it out. So that's the latest with this uh, R118. Um, I'll see if I can find some footage of, uh, of us using it uh, on the air. But we did, uh, did get some uh, 
helpful comments um, and it does does seem to be so it does seem to work all right okay so uh, that's it for the moment right let's give this a whirl and see what happens Everything seems to be more or less okay and I haven't had anything blow up just yet. So what I'm going to do is um, just show you uh, the modulation envelope of this. It's it's okay, it's not brilliant, but remember it's suppressor grid modulated so we're not going to have uh, quite the same degree of audio purity as you get from plate modulation. So I've got a Sig Jenny up there which uh, is set to about 1kc and put it rigged up via a power meter an SWR meter and uh, we'll have a look what it looks like on the uh, on the oscilloscope so let's crank it up and see what happens So at the moment we have about just under 80 watts carrier and if we look at the waveform here you can see there's a bit of distortion there. Now if I reduce the mod level down a bit you can see it there so that's probably about as good as it gets and you'll notice there that it's probably about mm, 70 possibly 80 percent modulation now, for audio comms, you know, for the stuff we do on the radio, that is that is actually not too bad. Uh, it'll be perfectly copyable. Um, and uh, it'll certainly do the job. What we'll try and see if we can just see what it sounds like on the radio. We'll connect up this receiver. And I'll give you a demo of the of the, uh, the audio quality, so you can see what it sounds like. This is um, this is the thing that I've had sort of, which I dug out uh, from under the table. It's an R three two six Soviet receiver, quite a nice one actually. This this is actually um, was originally powered by a couple of uh, NiCad batteries and uh, uses about two point five volts. So I've rigged. Uh, I've got this connected up to the uh, uh, power supply, the bench power supply, and uh, it's actually not bad. It's uh, quite sensitive, quite uh, selective as well, and uh, it's all valve. Uh, it's uh, again, and it's. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's. It was also sort of found its way to East Germany during the Cold War because all the all the uh, lettering is uh, East German, but it is actually originally from Russia. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so I'll give just give me a minute and I'll connect the receiver up and see what the uh, the audio sounds like through uh, through a microphone. <clears throat> I've connected up this receiver. Um, doesn't have much in the way of RF gain on it, which is a bit of a nuisance. Um, but anyway, you can hear what it sounds like. Don't sound too bad uh, for what it is. So let's flip the switch. One, two, three, four, five. Audio. <coughs> Audio. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Audio. Audio. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, three, four, five. One two three four five five four three two one one two one two. I think the uh, <clears throat> the uh, the uh, oh, it's probably overloading this receiver a bit. That's why it sounds a bit crunchy. 
Uh, but anyway. Well, it sort of shows you that it does, uh, it does sort of work. What I'm going to do is, um, I'll show you a quick snippet of a video that my friend Ian Bennett, G6TVJ, took, uh, which uh, shows the uh, transmitter in action, the uh, signal as it was received where he is in Bristol. Uh, and you can see, it doesn't sound too bad, I mean, uh, not bad at all really, quite happy with it. Um, you know, it's, uh, I think you're, uh, I think, uh... Um, I think you're being over-critical, Ray. I think you're, <laughs> I think you're comparing apples with pears. Uh, so anyway, uh, back to the comments anyway. They are, they are appreciated. And uh, as long as it's got the M1 PVC picture of approval, then uh, I don't mind. Then it's, uh, then it's uh, fine. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, a few reports first. Um, let me have a look. Uh, Brian, about 5, 9 plus 15. Martin, uh, good pick up on you, Martin. Actually, you're about 5, 9 plus 15, up to 20. Quite strong. Uh, Colin, uh, mind you, Colin, uh, across the Bristol Channel, 5 and 9 plus uh, 15. Uh, Andy, about 5 and 9 plus 5 to 10. And Ray, uh, also 5 and 9 uh, plus 15. Um, talking about one valve transmitters, uh, Ray, if you're still listening, um, I, um, I, I, I was actually, um, when I was sort of having problems with this uh, GU81 uh, Russian thing that I've got, um, I did put up a Anyway, uh, thanks for watching the video and we'll wait to the next project.